Hey everyone, Nick here from Empire Flippers. So in the first phase of the buyer build series, I'm gonna discuss the main online business models that are bought, built, and sold on the Empire Flippers platform and other online brokerages. Now, of course, these aren't the only business models that exist, but these are the businesses that are commonly sold, as in there's a market of buyers looking to purchase these specific types of business models for various reasons that we'll get into in a little bit. So whether you want to buy or build an online business within these business models you're owning an asset that has an immediately addressable market a clear pathway for selling and brokerages who specialize in helping you to sell these specific types of businesses now this of course assumes that your business is a healthy and attractive asset to acquire but if you stick around I'll get into what makes each of these business models an attractive acquisition now before we get started I should note that while I'm providing information on buying or building this this is not financial advice and you should consult with a financial advisor if financial advice is what you seek. This is really just meant to provide education and insight into what's possible so that you can then dig further into a specific path. So on that note, let's get into the first business model which is Amazon FBA and FBM. So why Amazon FBA? Well, over the past few years, I've seen people creating life-changing levels of wealth through selling on Amazon. And what I mean by that is creating physical products and then selling them on the Amazon marketplace. So looking at businesses being listed even on the Empire Flippers marketplace, people are building million dollar Amazon businesses even in as short as two to three years. And after interviewing several of these business owners myself, I've learned that it's really not as complicated as one might think, especially during the past two and a half years of the pandemic, e-commerce and Amazon saw just an incredible rise in activity and many Amazon business owners saw their businesses just explode in growth. Some Amazon store owners saw even up to a thousand percent growth in revenue and a ton of cash flow during this time period. Now, as a result, this drew a lot of attention from traditional investors and Amazon stores were now increasingly being perceived as these real assets and serious investments. And then due to the shift in investment appetite towards this business model, this gave rise to Amazon centric companies which were funded by outside investors and these companies their main goal was to search for and buy profitable Amazon businesses. These companies have entire teams of people who specialize in each facet of Amazon selling, which can include inventory management, customer support, ad campaign management, product development. And there were a few companies already doing this prior to the pandemic, but once this business model caught on and matured a bit, this type of company formally became known as the aggregator. And over the past couple of years, we've seen a boom in aggregator companies searching for and acquiring profitable Amazon businesses. And because of this, some Amazon store owners have been able to sell their businesses from six figure exits to as high as eight figure exits, depending on the business, of course. Now, I tell you all of this to say that if done properly, you can buy or build an Amazon business that generates large amounts of recurring cash flow for you. And then if you want to exit this business, there's a chance that you could sell this business for significant even retirement level gains. So if this is a business model that you might be interested in, let's get into the details of what Amazon as a business model actually looks like on the back end. So first for the uninitiated, what is Amazon FBA and FBM? So Amazon FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, which means you're selling your physical products on the amazon.com platform and Amazon is also fulfilling or shipping this inventory to customers when they order it. FBA also implies Amazon handles other types of services such as returns and restocking inventory if it's resellable or disposing of it if it's not. Now Amazon FBM stands for fulfilled by merchant and you are the merchant in this case so you are still selling on amazon.com so your product listings still appear on the site and the customer still experiences the Amazon shopping experience, but you as the seller are responsible for shipping the product to the customer. 
Now, most Amazon businesses sold on Empire Flippers are either 100% Amazon FBA or maybe a small percentage of Amazon FBM. And selling on Amazon is still selling a physical product, so it's considered e-commerce. But Amazon FBA and FBM on Empire Flippers is considered its own business model as many sellers sell 100% of their product uh, through Amazon and operate entirely within the Amazon ecosystem for advertising, marketing, customer support, Support and operating the entire business. So let's discuss how you operate an Amazon business. Pretty much with Amazon FBA, you're in charge of choosing the product you want to sell, designing it, manufacturing it, then shipping it into Amazon fulfillment centers. So once you've created your product listing, which is your kind of like your storefront on Amazon, and once you've sent your inventory to Amazon fulfillment centers and you're ready for sale, you're mostly expected to replenish inventory before it runs out and respond to customer messages within 24 hours. Now, in order to generate and grow your sales, you rely on two traffic channels. So you have organic traffic and ad generated traffic. So let's talk about organic traffic. Organic traffic is traffic that's unpaid traffic. And on Amazon is when somebody searches for your product and uh, they click on your specific product listing. Now the products on the first page and at the top of the page are the ones that receive the most organic purchases due to the fact that these products are the first things that customers see. So the better your organic ranking, the closer you are to the first page and the closer you are to the top of that page. Now let's talk about ad generated traffic. So ad generated traffic is traffic that you pay for. You're paying Amazon to place your product at the top of the page, even if your organic ranking wouldn't have you naturally being placed there. And this is so that customers are more likely to purchase your product. So when launching a new product, it's common for Amazon sellers to sell more of their product through advertising than organic. And then over time, as the organic rank improves, a larger portion of their sales are organic. Now, most Amazon businesses on Empire Flippers drive traffic organically and they pay for advertising, though some businesses are far less reliant on ad-generated sales to run their business. So how does FBM differ operationally? Well, you're still creating a product listing and still working to drive traffic organically and through ads, but you're shipping inventory from the manufacturer to yourself and you're fulfilling all of the orders as they come in. Or instead of receiving the inventory yourself and shipping it yourself, you might be sending it instead to a warehouse or a 3PL, which is known as a third-party logistics company. A 3PL provides the same type of service that Amazon fulfillment centers do, but the reason people use a 3PL is usually because either the storage costs are cheaper, the fulfillment and shipping service is cheaper, or it provides more flexibility for the amount of inventory that you can store. Or there are certain products that Amazon just doesn't allow you to store at their fulfillment fulfillment centers. So generally, what would it take to build this business model? If you're interested in building this business model, here's a summary of the steps you need to perform. First, identify a product to sell. Now you can use tools to assist in estimating demand, the sales volume of a particular product, the difficulty of entering based on the competition, or certain things that your competition is lacking with the current products. Number two is designing the product, which leads to number three, looking for and vetting suppliers to actually make that product. And there are websites like Alibaba that allow you to search for suppliers for specific products. And then number four is manufacturing the product. So when discussing the manufacturing terms with a supplier or manufacturer, you'll discuss things like the minimum quantity that you can order, also known as the minimum order quantity or MOQ, the shipping costs, if their service will include packaging or any other services, and really all details related to creating the product. That leads to number five, which is shipping the product. And this can involve hiring an inspector of the inventory, hiring a shipping agent to assist in the shipping process and working with customs, uh, preparing the shipment for Amazon fulfillment centers and shipping the product to Amazon. Number six is creating your product listing on Amazon. So in order to actually sell your product on amazon.com, you need to have a like a placeholder for it or a storefront. And that's where you see all of the product images, the product description, descriptions, so you'll actually have to make that yourself. Number seven is launching your product, which might include running ads or promotions to drive sales and improve your organic ranking, as mentioned before. And number eight, nine, and 10 are more operational points. So number eight is 
replenishing inventory before you run out. Number nine is replying to customer messages. And number 10 is managing your ad campaigns. So it's important that when going through this process that you're abiding by Amazon's terms of service at each step. So people experienced with selling on Amazon are aware that Amazon has a very strict terms of service policy that if violated can lead to your listing being either temporarily suspended or permanently banned. So understand the requirements for each stage and don't build a business off of shady tactics. And I should note that many of these responsibilities that I just mentioned can be outsourced, but when first starting out, you're likely going to be doing a lot of this yourself and you should at least learn how to do each of these tasks. So how would you grow the business? So at this stage, you've built an Amazon FBA business, you're generating sales, or if you've bought an Amazon business through us or through a broker, you've just skipped all of those steps in the previous phase and you're now at the maintenance and growth phase. Those are the two biggest benefits to buying a business, which is the time saved and proof of concept, or you've proven the product market fit for your business. All right, so number one for growth is ad campaigns. So spending more on advertising can increase your sales volume, which will in turn improve your organic ranking, which will then improve your non-advertising sales volume. Your long-term goal is to establish a stronger organic ranking to be able to drive consistent monthly sales with comparatively low cost. Number two is inventory. So if your plan is to improve your organic ranking by increasing your sales volume, you might need more inventory on hand to ensure that you're not running out of inventory during a more aggressive growth phase. Now this might look like a combination of ordering larger quantities of inventory or working with a 3PL to store inventory that you're unable to store in Amazon fulfillment centers due to certain inventory quantity limitations. Number three is adding more products. Now this can be variations of existing products or it could be related products that would make sense to add to your brand line that customers would likely also purchase in addition to the initial product. So if you launched toothbrushes as your initial product, maybe launching color variations of that toothbrush. And if you want to expand the brand line, sell something that this same customer will use such as toothpaste or floss. Number four is selling on other platforms off of Amazon and this can be walmart.com, Etsy, Wayfair, there are a lot of different platforms that you could sell on. Number five is marketing through other channels to drive more traffic to your product listing page. So this can be social media, email marketing or influencers just to name a few. Now those who buy Amazon businesses are usually ready to implement one or all of these growth levers. Uh, so if it's an aggregator, for example, they have a team who can do many of the above, or it could be somebody who's experienced with Amazon and managing advertising campaigns, or it could just be someone with, with a lot of cash who can afford to purchase a lot more inventory. So let's talk about the features that make an attractive acquisition. So if you're interested in building an Amazon business, what kind of business would be an attractive acquisition and give you the highest chance of selling for the highest offer? First is year over year growth or decline. Is your business steady or consistently growing? Next is having the right number of SKUs. So SKUs means the number of products that you have pretty much. Now, if you have too few SKUs, a buyer might think your business isn't diversified enough uh, and is susceptible to risk as a result. So for example, if you have only one or two SKUs that generate all of your profit and the listing or listings are shut down or the sales volume decreases, your business will also decline significantly. On the other side of the spectrum, if you have a business with let's say 200 SKUs, it's better protected in case something happens to one of those SKUs, but it could also be just a logistical nightmare to have to reorder that much inventory and ensure that you're not stocking out of anything. Now, this isn't a hard Hard science, of course, but a sweet spot might be something between five to 15 SKUs. Next is seasonality or volatility. So does your business generate consistent profit every month or are products more of a summer product or a holiday gift? If it's a highly seasonal business, it's not a bad thing, but it could just mean that a majority of the profits come in during a smaller window of time. Next is the percentage of sales generated from ad spend. So how much of your sales are organic and how much of your sales are ad driven? Businesses with more organic sales 
can be seen as more attractive acquisitions because you don't need to pay for these sales. It shows that customers are willing to purchase your product without being prompted to do so through advertising. You're less susceptible to ad cost increases, and it's a growth opportunity if someone did want to spend more on advertising. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of building or buying and owning an Amazon business. First, the pros. Amazon businesses can potentially generate high cash flow. So a lot of people are obviously buying things on Amazon. So you can expect to see high sales volumes if you're selling a product that people want. And if you're keeping healthy profit margin, you can generate a lot of cash flow from selling your products on Amazon. Next, you have several growth levers and potentially high growth. So as mentioned before, there are several things you can do to influence the growth of an Amazon business, which includes raising your prices, increasing advertising, reducing expenses, and those are just a few. And depending on the Amazon business and what's limiting its growth, these levers can have a huge impact on the business. There are some buyers of Amazon business that I've seen who, after making certain changes to an Amazon business, they were able to multiply their profits and generate a full return on their investment even within the first year of owning that business. All right, let's talk about the cons now. Selling on Amazon and selling physical products in general can be highly capital intensive, especially when you're first starting out, you're manufacturing the product, you're paying for shipping, you're paying for fees, you're running promotions to drive sales. So you're spending potentially a lot of money up front. Now you can get into this with a smaller budget if you're comfortable with slower growth and are more interested in just testing out selling on Amazon. But some people who want to go for more aggressive growth will buy larger amounts of inventory up front. The next con is that you are reliant on Amazon. So while selling on the Amazon platform has a ton of benefits, it also means that you're at the mercy of Amazon and their terms of service and really any business decision that Amazon makes. So if Amazon wants to raise advertising costs or reduce the amount of inventory that you can store at any given time or suspend your listing for using a word in your product description that you shouldn't have, these are all things Amazon can do and has done in the past. Though more experienced Amazon sellers are well aware of this and they're careful to keep their account healthy. But it's important to note that this is what you're signing up for when selling on any platform that you yourself don't own. So what kind of person might enjoy this business model or be a good fit for it? First is those interested in building and owning a brand. So those who tend to do best on Amazon nowadays are those with a brand. If you're going to get into this, you should have at least the mindset that this could be a long-term game. Branded businesses tend to be better ones than the businesses that just slapped a logo on generic products. Next is those who like physical products. In the online business world where many things are digital, some people like having a business that can still provide freedom of location, but it's also a bit more tangible. Depending on how much you want to be involved in the creation and fulfillment of the product, an Amazon business can be hands-on if you want it to be. But just remember that if you want to sell the business, you'll need to have systems in place where you can remove yourself from the operation. Next point are those who are not deterred by inventory management and logistics, or customer support. These will be two of the main tasks you'll perform once you're in operation mode. And you can outsource these tasks, but just note that these will be important to always stay on top of. Next is those experienced in running advertising campaigns. So if you have this skill, you might be able to come into a business and significantly grow it if the business has non-optimized ad campaigns. Next is those with experience in e-commerce, but perhaps not on Amazon. So if you have some experience with e-commerce, but not on Amazon, you might might be a great fit because you could have a lot of skills that those who have only sold on Amazon might be lacking in such as supply chain management or supplier negotiations. Last is those with capital to inject in a business that is limited in growth primarily due to not having enough inventory. You'd be surprised how many businesses on the marketplace are limited in growth by just not being able to buy enough inventory to meet demand without stocking out. So that could be a very direct and simple growth opportunity. So that's a summary of the Amazon FBA and FBM business model. If you're interested in potentially buying one of these businesses, feel free to check out our marketplace. I also recommend just speaking with a sales advisor because they can provide just really helpful insight into what kinds of businesses might be a good fit for what you're looking for. And they're also aware of what's currently on the marketplace or coming through the pipeline that could fit what you're looking for. And if you're interested in a business model that has no inventory, stay tuned for the next episode on content sites. So on that note, I'll see you in the next one.